I want to look at more Mortal Kombat 11 stress test matches. James and I looked at a bunch, uh, but there's a lot more, and we're going to do a little bit separately. Um, I want to look at stuff that I did, and unfortunately, the best set that I played throughout the stress test wasn't recorded on my little LGP recorder. That's kind of a bummer, but that's how it went. Um, so I'm going to be looking at other matches, and there were some good ones. There were some not so good ones. I have like tried to separate them into the more okay ones. So I've like created these little individual videos of sort of topics. And this one is entitled OK Scarlets. So it's gonna be Scarlet, I guess. Uh, I don't really remember. I put these videos together several days ago. And my only thought at the time was like, yeah, these Scarlets are all right. So that's why I titled it OK Scarlets and not like Amazing Scarlet Player. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not really sure how this is going to look. Uh, let me know how the video sound is, by the way. I'm, ju I'm only playing Bardock for sure. Don't decline me. Come on. Who do we got? I don't know. All right, sweet. I guess this is one of them then. Um, I really like that you can see the connection type at the start. I, I'm i not sure it's as important in this game as it is in other games. Like, man, if you could see that for, I don't know, most other fighting games out there, that's like important info that the opponent's playing on Wi-Fi because that's actually going to cause a bad matchup, uh, more likely. In this game, I don't really think so. Game audio is low, okay. I mean, it is, keep in mind, it's Mortal Kombat, and the game audio, the like music is marginally there. Let me know how it sounds now. Now that you can actually hear stuff going on. Because <laughs> there's really like no game sound beforehand. Anyway, yeah, I don't think that knowing the Wi-Fi thing is quite as important in the context of Mortal Kombat 11, because the connection is just so good. And even though I was playing on hotel Wi-Fi, Dude, yesterday we watched a video of James playing against Beirudi, who lives in Western Canada. James was in Atlanta. He was on hotel Wi-Fi, and it was still good. So, let me know if it sounds alright, eh? It's a little loud in my own ears, so I'm going to load it here. Uh, so, I felt that Scarlet seemed like a really good character. I just felt, I just saw so few strong ones. And it wasn't really until the beta, until the stress test was over that I watched some good ones. Like, I watched, you know, actual good players. Sonic Fox play and so forth. And um, She has a lot of really good looking tricks and space control and buttons. And I felt like I almost never saw that stuff. <laughs> Playing against people on the stress test. It's just how it kind of worked out. Oh, yo, yeah, okay. I threw her out of the teleport. That's, that's kind of cool. I basically found the Baraka back 3, which is that low starter. Back 3 1. Basically, it was unblockable. Round two, fight. For most people. Oh. Oh, I remember that. I was trying to cancel into down, down back 1 into the fireball, and I. I had a bunch of problems with that. Wow, I, I don't respect this dude at all, clearly. <laughs> Yeah, look at that button. She has this big string. I don't know what the string is, but it looks really good. She's got some mobility. She's got good walk speed. I mean, especially in the context of this game. Oh, I thought he would block, and I was going for a tick. I just want tick grab. <laughs> That's all I'm going for right there. Oh, dang. All right. So my typical combo route when I was playing as Bone Deep Baraka, which is the command grab one, uh, I didn't like make a custom variation, I just played whatever they, they gave you. And my typical combo route was just like into Fireball, you know? Not into, he has like the spines which causes a knockdown, but uh, I liked ending in the Fireball because it gives you plus frames, it, the damage was good, you get pressure afterward, like you get a free... I guess you can do like back four or back two, which is not maybe like the wildest mix up, but it's uh, it seemed all right. So that's basically what I went to. I wonder if I had been playing against stronger players, if I had been like forced to learn to try other stuff. That's what I was going for before. But that never really came. Well, 
didn't come out as often as, as I was hoping so. I'm telling you, back three right there is unblockable. Do you see how I get I get the little back four after the fireball? Well, not after regular fireball, but after EX fireball. I like that. Seems that seems alright. So her teleport was a little curious to me. I didn't really know what to make of it. It's, I mean, it's no like Raiden Displacer teleport in terms of the speed, or even Scorpion teleport in this game seems pretty fast. But it also didn't seem like it always ended up right next to me. So there were times when people would teleport like kind of behind me and were far away still. Like it didn't seem like I could punish easily, which was surprising and pretty cool. Back forward to command grab, dude. There you go, block, and it actually tick grabs. Sweet. And then you call out the fatal blow. I'm sure there's some cool combos she can get out of that string. Oh, yo, you definitely could have done. I could have done stand one for sure. Juggle. Interesting, dude. I'm so I'm so stoked for this game. Like every time I watch it, I find something that I could have been doing differently. I mean, obviously I'm not a top player, right? Uh, so I'm. I keep like finding stuff where I'm like, wow, I gotta remember that for the actual game when it comes out. It's a bunch of stuff. Like his down one seems like it's a good anti-air. I've seen it anti-air, uh, in one of these videos, I forget where it was, I did down one anti-air into fireball, like as a weird kind of jump in anti-air. Not a preemptive one like that one was, but like the opponent jumped in with like Baraka jump kick, which is really strong. And I did down one into fireball, and it juggled from pretty far. So that's it's cool, cool little stuff like that. I gotta, I gotta keep in mind. I also, yesterday, I saw that I did back two for Baraka over that low projectile. So I'm gonna keep that in mind too. I feel like that or command grab would be super sick to get on reaction to that little low projectile. If that's even something that people do as Scarlet, like I don't, I don't know. Like in terms of the variations that they would pick. I don't know if that's a good one or what. Zoning as Bardock. Man. Yeah, so, <laughs> Sonic Fox was getting full combos from down one anti with Scarlet. For sure. For sure. I feel like that's I mean like I've been I've hung out with Sonic Fox as he's finding out new stuff. In fact, for Mortal Kombat X, this was four years ago, which in him his lifetime, it's like a fifth of his life. That literally is true pretty well um anyway as mkx came out we were there for a uh, fatal eight oh do some cool juggle jump one oh, okay, no, that's fine pretty good damage anyway um uh, fatal eight was like the release co uh tournament for it and they invited eight players and sonic fox was one of them and so we're we all saw it together for the first time the game and we went into the back room and started training up you know and you know, typically when there's some new game and I'm hanging out with my friends and we're finding stuff out, it's honestly usually me who's like, wow, what if, what if, and I kind of come up with a lot of the tech. One of the few situations where it hasn't been me who's like driving that train is Sonic Fox. This like 16, 17 year old kid was, he was so fast in terms of picking up like what you should be doing, figuring out new tech. Like it was crazy how fast it was. It was honestly remarkable. Remarkable. No, I'm planning to stream more often on Ultra Chen rather than Ultra David. Um, unless it's something that, like, maybe I'll talk, like, politics or law on Ultra David or something that's more, I don't know, personal to me rather than, like, kind of just regular fighting game stuff. I think it's probably better to do it on this. Anyway, yeah, so it doesn't surprise me that Sonic Fox would be doing crazy stuff in Weekend 1. Not at all. But yeah, there's got to be some cool combo after that, right? After that pop-up string? Like, there aren't that many pop-up strings in the game, as far as I've seen. Not even just among these three characters that were in the stress test, but like the ones that they've even shown on the combat cast. Like, I don't know that I've seen more than just a couple of like real launcher strings like this one. So that's a pretty nice thing for Scarlet. Ugh, oh, the unblockable. Ugh, oh, no. Too far. Yeah, it's too far. You have to walk forward slightly after back, after back two, and I think I might have realized that around this time. I didn't realize that at the start. Bardock, man, he's so strong. I'm just trying to, yeah, this is what I'm trying to do, trying to cancel. I'm not trying to mash down one. I just keep screwing up down one into down back one. Dang, 
want to read. Yeah, there's hours more footage, honestly. I'm not going to be able to show it all right now because i got to get to work in about an hour, but... Um, yeah, there's a lot. I'll show it over the next few days. What's the gutted command? I don't remember. I only tried that. No, I, did, I never tried it. I never tried gutted. I was basically playing the command grab one and the flag day one, and I never really played uh, with gutted, so I couldn't tell you. Can I give an off the top of my head top three characters in MK11? I, I can't. I can't, honestly. And I don't think that anybody really can. There's just no way to know how they'll end up in terms of balance. This is not the last final version of the game, right? Oh, they left, okay. That was an OK Scarlet? What am I, I don't know. Again, I titled this like little compilation, OK Scarlets and the, uh, okay, well. Um, anyway, so this is obviously not the final build. It's gonna be a while until we know how characters really end up. And even even if they were exactly the same, even if there was like just how they are in this game, in this uh, build, in the final game, there's still so many characters that haven't even been playable yet that it's hard to know, right? Like we've seen Johnny and Kano on the combat cast and stuff. Like we have a little bit of an idea what they do, other characters too, but we never tried them. And so even if these characters are exactly the same, I, I don't know if Johnny is better or not. It's just that you can't know that yet. So, you know, it's too early to talk, but um, I can tell you which characters I'm interested in. What's going on here? We uh, moving along here? Fast forward and oh dang it! Okay. Right. I'm interested in Garrus. Hey, all right. I'm interested in Kano and Kotal. It's why Shaw can talk me blood magic. But I'm more interested in Bardock than I thought I would be. I think Bardock's pretty sick. That that as a whiff punisher, he's got sick whiff punishers, right? But it's not, they're not like into big damage. I, um, maybe forward two is, maybe you can do that. Maybe I should have done that more often. But I think typically I did back four or back, back forward two as whiff punishers. Um, they're not into big damage, but they're like party starters that allow him to then walk up and get pressure. Or if it's command grab, you're right next to them anyway. Like it's so he's clearly meant to be like a kind of with with Punisher counter poker into offense character. That's my read on the character anyway. That's his Bardock, man. Round two, fight. Freaking Bardock, dude. He kills Scorpio. Oh, I thought yeah, that was okay. So that was probably supposed to be up three, and then I tried it again. I don't know why I did flag right there. Yeah, maybe Scorp's damage should be buffed, I don't know. It seems like he has so many good options in neutral. Like, really good footsies, good... I mean, if you have Misery Blade, then he has good safe pressure. Uh, he's got good teleport, which is really fast. I don't know that that's the kind of character you want to do a lot of damage, but maybe. Maybe. Dang. Yeah, big cheese, dude. I, I'm I'm uh, happy about that kind of thing. Says so the first time. This is the first time Barak is using his teeth to bite enemies. Like they, as they've been talking about on the combat cast, all the characters just like use their cool tools, right? They're not just kept for certain few animations. They're actually using their spines, their teeth, their swords, their chains. Like that, you know. That's really cool. It's like just they're doing such a good job in terms of the personality of the characters. For this, I was just playing a PlayStation pad. I didn't have anything fancier than that because it was in Atlanta. Traveled across country, and I, you know, I traveled with the PlayStation and stuff, and I felt like that was enough to carry. I didn't want to also carry my my hitbox or anything else. That's such an easy combo for so much damage. I think later in this, I started to do jump one before four two. And I think I entered it in command grab as well, rather than EX fireball. Yo, the whiff punisher command grab? That's so sick. 
Oh, this guy is actually blocking? Let's go SSJ Mike. Maybe this is the actual okay Scarlet. I just screwed up the first part. Sit. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's funny that this game is the one that has so much personality in the characters, and it's the one where you murder them. Yeah. I think that's weird. Ugh, finally the block. Yo, wow, I went in again. That's not a good idea. That's so cool. What a cool mix-up. Oh, yeah? Dang, dude. What a wild leap. But isn't that, like, such a cool, like, this is a savage, kind of feral character, so he's got this, like, half-screen leaping command grab. Like, I just I think that fits the personality of the character so well. This is what I'm talking about! Yo, her, tele her teleport goes so far away, like, you can't... I don't know how to how to deal with that, I guess. I probably shouldn't have been throwing fireballs, considering I've been seeing that he's floating around like that, but, you know. Could do better on that front. Yeah, see, I didn't even think it was gonna be next to me! Why are you next to me sometimes? Wow, what a mix-up. Jump back into back two. Alright. That's so obviously a grab. The walk forward first is like the clear indicator. Why would I do down one after that? What a bad idea. You, I think you have big plus frames. It certainly felt like it. Not a good usage of that. Oh, I was hoping he would block. Come on. Teleport clearly. Oh, that's the one I'm waiting for, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, back three low is unblockable, right? I'm just trying to jump away, it looks like. Was I a fan of Wolverine and Marvel vs. Capcom? Also a mauling, feral muscle man with claws. That's true. No, I mean, I don't care that much. I also don't super care about Baraka. In fact, before this game, I've always felt he was just kind of a throwaway whatever character. And I don't know that I ever personally knew anybody who cared about Baraka as a character. I didn't expect him back at, at all. And when he came, not only is he back, but he's like one of the first few characters that they showed. I was very surprised. Very surprised. But they did make him a lot cooler. And same with Scarlet. Did I expect Scarlet back? No. I thought she was a throwaway too. Uh, although more interesting maybe than Baraka. But not only is she back, but she's like one of the first ones back. I, both of those I thought were really surprising. But the way that they made them into characters, like less throwaway. What a bad punish. Or if you even can punish. Uh, less, less throwaway. They're like much more fleshed out. You know, they have personalities. They have cooler moves. They seem more effective because Baraka was ass in MK9. All that stuff's cool, so I was happy. In the end, I just was surprised. Dang, tried to roll. Why would I do down one? You, what a bad idea. So Kano, I do know people who like Kano as a character. Even in MK9, I knew some people who liked Kano. Not many, for sure, but I knew a couple. Uh. In MKX, I felt he... I mean, I didn't care for him. I didn't care about Kano in MK9 and previously. But in MKX, they made him such a more interesting character. It's like what they did now with Baraka. Um, he... Kano has a personality in MKX. Like, he's got interesting tools. He has a command grab. He's a zoner. Like, he's got... Not just in gameplay, but like in personality and looks. He's just much more fleshed out and, and interesting. So, I'm not surprised now that people like Kano after MKX, because I think he's cool now. But I didn't think that he was cool before that. Why wouldn't that pressure there? That's weird. What? Back four? Oh, I think I was hoping to bust through the armor on this thing. 
Because clearly there was going to be a fatal blow. Come on, dude. Well, the movement speed, Nuona, is apparently getting stepped up. So I don't know if the jumps will continue to be as slowly looking as they are. That I don't know that they'll be changed for sure. I'm just saying I feel like there's a chance that along with improving dashes, there's going to be a jump improvement. It probably doesn't need to be a lot. Because I think the idea of the game is to be more grounded anyway. I don't think the idea is to like have a ton of air mobility, dash mobility. But more than was in the stress test would definitely be nice. I don't know if jumps are homogenous in this game. That's a good question. I think I'd be surprised if that was the case, but maybe. Haven't seen enough characters yet. What am I doing? So I'm getting hit for no reason here. Dude, I definitely agree that no more neutral jump punch, ground bounce, slash splat. I mean, it's whatever as a gameplay choice. You know, it's... what If you know that it's there, like, that's fine. You just play and it's, you know doesn't cause any problems necessarily but it's always just been a strange idea to me like why would a neutral jump punch do that i don't know i mean that's mortal Kombat. you know like there's, there's a lot of things in the game even in still in mk11 that you just have to like accept it was more like that before especially in mk9 where you just couldn't combo some strings into some specials it just didn't work uh or like the way that they dealt with player one versus player two, or, you know, there's just a lot of stuff that's like, what's this about? And neutral jump punches was part of it. Jump punch being the first hit of a string, and then you continue the combo, or jump kick being a knockdown, and it's not a string starter. Like, there's just weird logic, you know, but once once you accept it as logic, then it's fine. Like, you just, it's, it's just its own internal game. It's not like every other fighting game out there. Once you accept that, it's not a gameplay problem. But some of it still seems like a weird design choice, if, if you get my point. Ooh, I tried to meet her in the sky, why? I'm like, oh, it's probably supposed to just be up three wake up, to be honest. This is the worst down one matching. <laughs> Is the connection getting bad? I don't remember this if this got shut down, but it's starting to freak out a little bit. Oh, I wonder what he wants. Can you believe do you think it's teleport fatal blow? You can see I'm just I'm just not dude. I did it! I can't believe I did it! Wow, what a dumb choice. That does is that projectile vulnerability? Let me back up. Yeah, I feel like that's what happened here. I think that I assumed... No, she just hit me before. Okay, okay. Because I feel like my intention there was to beat the Fatal Blow's armor. And I think I just didn't have the right meaty timing for it, that's all. As far as I know, the Fatal Blow has one hit of armor. That, But that didn't even need armor, it just hit me before the projectile actually reached. I mean, that's what it seems, right? Once training mode comes out, I gotta try a lot of tech. See if the block or hit uh, option select still exists, like in MKX. They they did they did tweak it. it they fixed it to a large degree, but uh, wasn't fully fixed. Why am I doing down one into? down back one like it's gonna combo. I don't know, it seems it's a weird choice. Oh, can I explain the player one versus player two side thing? Yeah, so if in MK9, if there's a trade, player one wins. That's, that's the explanation. Okay, so that was it. So, do you want to see my compilation of OK Scorpions or OK Barakas? Because I have two more things to show. And I don't remember which one's better. <laughs> so let me know which one you'd rather see. Do you want to see a Baraka mirror match? Although I don't think that they're using Bone Deep, the command grab variation, very much, if I recall correctly. I feel like I was one of the few that I saw. Oh, it was super whack. 
<laughs> the way the trades worked, yeah, for sure it was a problem. But that's why they fixed it, right? But MK9 was the first game that NRS ever made that was, like, intended to be competitive, you know? Even if, like, early MKs, some people played them as competitive games, like, that, you know, that the intention of the developers... I don't know that anybody's intention, I guess, was at the time, but, like, <laughs> to the extent it was competitive, I, felt, I always felt it was, like, accidental. But MK9 was intended to be that way. And I think that they just didn't know what to do, like, honestly. All right, let's do Barakas then. Bam. Baraka. Baraka. Yo, Bardock is too good, man. His beams, you can't beat him. Can't beat those beams. I'm just trying to read what the what the strings are there. I think this is like the last day, and only now am I trying to read the strings. I think I just tried to figure it out, trick figure it out otherwise. Oh, am I the red guy? Sick. Dang, yo, gutted is such a good move. Jeez. Look at that. Look at that. That's it. Oh, really? What are you do? What are you bashing this down one for? Jeez, man. Gotta quit that. Oh, dude, I think Aaron Black is such a nerd. <laughs> he looks cooler now, but man, in MKX, I thought he was just a nerd. <laughs> he like didn't look. I think he didn't look cool. I thought his moves didn't look cool. I thought he was looked like he was flailing around constantly, like he was fighting for the first time. I just thought he was such a nerd. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping he would block. Dang, he jumped. Can you punish Gutted? It seems safe in this. 1 2 2. Yo, he was waiting for the. Oh, I tried. Well, that's not a bad try. I guess I didn't know if there would be a gap in there between back 31. Do you think the fighting seems more simplified than MKX? I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like it's quite complicated. But maybe complicated in different ways. It doesn't seem like the game is so much about major juggles. But that might be wrong. You know, we, As the stress test went on, more people were doing cooler combos, like using um, crushing blows in the combos and getting big damage. But maybe in general, the combos are less complex. Other than that, I feel like it's as complex, if not more. Yo, this guy keeps ducking those command grabs, hey? Ah, oh, the punish. That's such a good crushing blow. Yeah, I've seen him just duck. Like, yeah, you see him neutral ducking again? Why am I getting hit by a back three? Is it unblockable to me too? Come on, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, I think I think this game seems quite complex myself. Are you trying to zone with me? What are you doing, man? Yeah, I see you neutral jumping. Or I mean, ne neutral ducking. You think it's weird that fireballs don't clash? That's been Mortal Kombat forever. It's always been that way. And it is unique. I mean, I get so uh, talking about things that are unique in MK that you just have to accept. That is definitely one of them. You just have to accept, like, fireballs don't clash. It's just how the game works, you know? That's not good or bad, I don't think. It's just different. 
It's no anti air, jeez. Oh, the connection looks a little janky right now. Most fighters, the in most fighting games, the projectiles clash. Yeah, yeah, they, they cancel each other out for sure. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to take any risk with that fatal blow. <laughs> like, I don't even think it's true that you have to think more in this game than MKX. I felt MKX was, although certainly more mix-up heavy than it seems this game is. Seems because we haven't gotten it yet. I always felt people talked about that part too much. Like, it's definitely a game that has footsies. It, you definitely play footsies in MKX. Some of the characters that, like, one Evo, like, Katana one Evo, you know what I mean? Like, she's was zoning and playing footsies and not up close, high, low mix ups. Like, it's. Um, I always felt that was overblown. Even though, obviously, it's important. I just thought that was. Like, think about, like, Melina was one of the top characters for a while. Super good footsies were the reason. Like, I just... I think that's so important in that game, so... But for sure, footsies seem even stronger in this game. I think that's... Uh, a fair thing to say. So, yeah, it's not, it's not true that all projectiles don't clash. There are some that do clash, but that's, like, a special property of those projectiles. And I think MKX was the first game they ever did where that was the thing. Oh, I was gonna keep it up, dude. So I like this. I like this fireball game. This reminds me of like Street Fighter IV Sagat fireball game, <laughs> like as in, in the mirror match. I mean, where you have to whether you throw a low tiger or a high tiger is like a really big. Those are two very different things in that in that game. In the context of that game, and I don't want to miss the fatal blow again. Uh, and I, I like that in this game, the way that you you just duck under high projectiles, right? But then if the opponent does a uh, amplified Baraka fireball that one hits mid so you can't neutral duck it so if you crouch block you will get hit you will get touched by both fireballs the high one and then the mid follow up if you neutral duck you'll duck the first a hit which is just a high and then you'll get hit by the follow up which is a mid so you have to block that one and if you're trying to throw a fireball against the other Baraka you'll notice that if you throw if you hit them between when they throw the first fireball and then they amplify and then the second fireball if they get hit before that then they'll have spent a bar on offense without the second fireball actually coming out so you have to expect when they're going to throw a fireball and try to interrupt that if if they don't if you don't interrupt it and you have thrown a fireball you'll get hit by two fireballs rather than one i think there's a lot of interesting little incentives in there to like play an interesting fi fireball game yo i thought this was baraka compilation what's up Oh man, yeah, there was definitely a little error there in the net code. Woo! Oh, I really thought he was gonna block, I guess. Wake up four? Or was that three? Maybe I was trying to up three. I can't, I don't know the difference between his, his stand three and stand four yet. I'm not legit enough. Just teleport, yeah, you know. What are you going to do? Uh, unfortunately, this is my actual PS4 username. And you couldn't change it. I was really hoping you could change it for the beta. Like, in the actual in-game. You know how, like, how in Street Fighter V there's a CFN and you have your PlayStation ID, but that's different than your CFN one. I was hoping that would be the case here, but it's not. You could definitely do jump one before forward two in that situation. I like Baraka too because I like that. I mean, I've been talking about his fireball. I like the fireball. So he's got both the command grab and the fireball, which I'm happy about. But 
I'm looking forward to Kano because I really hope that you can have both the command grabs and the zoning laser on the same variation. If that takes a custom variation, that's that's cool. I really hope that will be the case. Why was I just standing there? It's weird. Oh man, woo! I don't have that overlay here to have the woo sound, but uh, thanks for the bits. Uh, I'm probably gonna be more like Kano, Kotal, and, well, no, Geras for sure, I think is the character I wanna play the most. But then either Kano or Kotal, maybe both. We'll see, but yeah, I feel like maybe Maybe Garrus and Kano, if you can do command grab and zoning variation together. That seems like what I would want to do. Yeah, when you do a jump and punch, and if you have gotten to the other side of the opponent before you press punch, your character will turn back around and face the opponent. Just like that. Perfect timing. And again, that's one of those things that you just have to accept about Mortal Kombat. Does any other fighting game work like that? I guess maybe Marvel vs. Capcom works like that, but not even in all situations in that series. That's like its own thing, you know, you just gotta, it's cool. Just accept. I don't feel like I needed to lose this round. Oh, am I not gonna? Wow! Bardock. I think the Shang Tsung looks so cool that it's the same actual actor from the movie. That's so cool. So when you do a cross up, you do like a jump and punch as kind of like a late like a cross up. You can't do the punch when you're directly above their head. You do need to wait until you're on the other side, and then it'll come out. But if you do the jump punch like too early, like with like a mortal with a Street Fighter kind of cross up timing. You know, where you want, you do the button before you're on the other side, typically, in Street Fighter. Because you want it to be, like, kind of ambiguous on the top of their head. That's not how cross-ups work in this game. You want to do, at least jump, jump in punches, you want to do the punch later so that it turns around. A jump in kick kind of doesn't super matter that much, depending on the character. Like, Baraka's jump kick just knocks down regardless, and it is a good enough hitbox that it hits as a cross-up. But jump in punches typically don't hit as cross-ups. You have to actually be on the other side to have them autocorrect. This is not live, this is from last weekend. But I didn't get to stream it at the time because I was at final round. Oh uh, yeah, so I think I'm trying to I'm trying to look for a better punish to teleport than 112. And eventually I found 122, which as a punish will do dang, will do crushing blow, and you get a pop-up out of it. So that's a good that's a good punish. Wow. Three fireballs, huh? Dang. Alright. Final round. Fight. I wonder if Shang Tsung will have morphing. Yeah, that would be super sick if they could do that. What does crushing blow do? First of all, you've spelled it wrong. It's not CR, it's KR, Crushing Blow. All right, get it right. Uh, second, each Crushing Blow does a different thing. Have you ever played Soul Calibur? You know, there's lethal hits in that game. If not, um, it's just, you have to meet some condition to get a better animation, more damage, and in some cases, a combo. And that condition is very different depending on which Crushing Blow it is. Certain moves have them, certain moves don't. One of them is that 1-2-2 two, two for Baraka. As a punish, it will cause a crushing blow. One of them is that for Scorpion, I think it's 2-1-2, two, two, will do, uh, or whatever, whichever one it is. At the end of a long combo, if he does this certain string, it'll cause a crushing blow, but only at the end of a long combo. So there's like, different things like that. If you see me do the up two, the big, uh, the down two, the big uh, uppercut, and it causes a like crack head and then a juggle afterward, that is a crushing blow that only triggers if you do a down two when the opponent does a high attack, like at the same time. So, you know, it's just a bunch of different stuff. I think it's a super cool idea. 
it's not like a brand new. I, they didn't come up with it, really. I mean, I feel like Soul Calibur and before that, even maybe like Fexel or or Cross Tekken had similar kinds of ideas. But I love it. I think it's a, I think it's a very well done system. It's one of my favorite parts about the new game. You can choose not to do crushing blows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the button configuration, you can set it up so that you only do a crushing blow if you hold the button that activates it. I didn't say this. You can only do each crushing blow once per game. Not per round, but per game. So you have to decide when it's important enough to bring out your crushing blow. Like, is it, say you're way ahead and the next hit is to win a round. You don't want that to be a crushing blow because it's just a waste, right? You didn't get more damage out of it, you didn't get a juggle out of it, you just killed the round. But you would have done that anything, anyway with anything. So that's just a use, uh, bad usage of it. So instead, yeah, you hold the button down to activate the crushing blow. But you have to do that in button configuration. And I don't think that I did the, that for this. Round two, fight. And yeah, some of the crushing blows do have bleed damage. Or dot damage, as 16-bit likes to say. Dang, what a mix-up. Back three into nothing. Man, this was supposed to be me versus Baraka players. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think this might have been the first time I saw a bunch of those strings. <laughs> I was like trying to figure out how to block. You can end combos with crushing blows. In fact, some combos, some crushing blows are only activated if you do them as combo enders. So again, there's a lot of variety in how crushing blows are activated. There's a lot of differences in terms of which, you know, what activates uh, what activates what. Like, also, for example. Oh, this, this is early, I guess. I'm 34 and 2. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I don't remember, I guess. Yeah, crushing blows can be combo starters. They can be combo enders. They, they seem very diverse. I think it's really cool. I think that it's a very interesting idea. And, and well done. Again, not like a brand new idea per se, but just a very well done version of the of this take on it. Like having some external condition. Like it's great to play footsies and, and you know, just sort of do all the typical fighting game stuff. There's a lot of kind of overlap in how games do that stuff. Obviously with different tools, strategies and so forth. But, you know, you want to pressure and play neutral and, and like you kind of get it between different games. But to have like an external condition Oh, if you do three throws and the opponent texts them wrong each time, the third one will do a ton of damage. You have to keep in mind like how many throws you've done and how many times they've gotten the tech wrong. Uh, you have to keep in mind um, all these little things like, like, okay, if I have a punish, I can do a punish that is some damage, but it doesn't spend my crushing blow. Or I can do the full-on crushing blow blow up. And is this a good time to use that or not? I can't use it for the rest of the game. So, like, if it's round one, early in the round, do I already want to spend that? That means I get a big life advantage. That's cool. Maybe it's a good start to the round. But what if I end up just coasting to victory on that in that round? And, like, I didn't need to spend it there at all. Should I save it for a situation where it's, you know, I'm sort of in a more dire position? I think that's, there's a cool uh, strategic element to that. Yeah, so some of the crushing blows will be rare. Definitely will be rare. Like in, in the stress test, I saw a couple of times that Scorpion has a full screen spear that will crushing blow. So that's not, like not a good, not a great strategic idea typically to throw spear full screen. It's a hard call out, you know, oh, maybe if the opponent throws a fireball right now and I happen to throw a spear, here they come. Like typically not a great idea, but the fact that there's a crushing blow on it at least makes you maybe consider you should get it and do more damage. 
you probably won't see that very often. But I like that, you know, there are these things that will be surprises when they happen. Or, I mean, not every crushing blow is designed for, like, top-level play, right? Maybe that's for, for people who are not top-level and they're having fun and they get a spear full screen because you do that. And lo and behold, there's a big crushing blow. Like, I think that's, I think that's cool, too. I'm cool with that. They do show you uh, that the opponent has teched the wrong way. Yeah. You got to keep that in mind. So it not not just like see it, but you have to like remember what number throw you're on. Dang, that button's so strong. Forward four. Ooh, yo, that was so sick. All right. Let me see it again. Let me see it again. Dude, yo, down one hurt box. Look at this thing. Yo, oh, damn. All right, that's sick. Sick. I think I just found one two two string. <laughs> that's like my. I'm trying it out. Like, oh, what if this is a button? You don't like the throw break system, dude? I think the throw break system's sick. <laughs> like a lot of a lot of decisions in Mortal Kombat, a lot of game decisions in terms of design are clearly inspired by 3D. You know, because the game was 3D for a while. Like how strings work and how throw techs work. I feel like those are clearly like, what did Tekken and Soul Calibur do? You know, let's do something similar. I think it's cool. But I also think because of how the mix-ups work in this game, and there aren't that many characters with wild overhead low kind of mix-ups, I think that the throw tech is going to be a huge part of this. So typically in MKX, you didn't see throws that often because you just had better mix-ups that were more damaging. Um, and when you saw somebody throw in the corner, you typically want to maintain control of the corner, of course, right? That's preferable. So, oh yeah, I didn't know what to do about this flag guy. I remember being confused about that. Um, Anyway, so you have to check those differently, right? Uh, if, there's, if they're throwing you backwards or forwards, you gotta do uh, one or the other, one or two, uh, as a tech. And uh, in MKX, like you just didn't see throw out of the corner very often, because you know you had better mix-ups than that. And if you could, and if the th the throw was the mix-up, maybe rather than like the back or forward throw being the mix-up, just doing a throw was like, wow, that's weird. You could have done an overhead there, like that kind of thing. In this game, though. Throwing, I think, is going to be more important as a mix-up, and actually throwing back or forward, I think, is actually going to be a huge part of the mix-up game. Bigger than an MKX. So the fact that there's a fatal blow, or a crushing blow on that mix-up, I think is like them being like, this is the mix-up, guys. Yeah, back or forward throw, it's going to be a huge part of it. The PC version, dang, yo, back four. that's crazy. Uh, the PC version is not developed in-house by, by NRS. But don't be too concerned about how it'll be. Uh, I played Injustice 2 mostly on the PC, and I played MKXL on the PC, and they were both very good. And it's the same people making uh, MK11. So don't be too concerned. MKX release was bad, for sure. I tried it too, and it sucked. But then MKXL, the follow-up to that, and then Injustice 2, both good. So don't, don't be too concerned. Treat the flag like Bane Charge, all right. I found out later that that's cancelable on a crushing blow. So there's like different move properties, right? On crushing blow, it's not just that there's, you get a juggle afterward for a pop-up or that there's damage over time or whatever. There's also some moves become cancelable that are not usually cancelable. And I didn't know that. That's a cool thing. Woo, man. Oh, dang, back. That's a weird choice. Weird choice by me. Wow. You know, back two for Baraka is is good, right? It's the big leaping overhead. That I think that's good. I'm not sure it's great. Like it's like it's a great space closer. It's maybe a great low crush. Like I feel like there's a lot of good uses to it. 
I guess you have to use it in mix-ups probably sometimes, but especially if you have the command grab variation and you get either command grab or back to overhead. But it seems slightly minus on block. And I don't know if I want to be like minus on block up close very often. Cause you don't, it's not like MKX or MK9 where like you have meter burn moves to just get armor whenever you want. And so if you're in a slightly minus position, it's like, all right. Cause you just armor through the next hit. It's like not a big deal if you want to spend meter. But now that's not really an option. So it's like a more kind of Street Fighter 5 style where you don't have very many armored and invincible tools to like take your turn back. So maintaining your turn's time is super important. Dang, I'm not handling, I'm getting, I'm getting out zoned. Dang, dude, come on, David. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that was, what a bad jump. What a bad jump. Come on. No, it was too, yeah, obviously too far. What? I flagged him? Not intentional, I'm sure. Ah, HK Riders, that makes sense. Says that the meta is now, if you're in minus frames, you do flawless blocking up two if the opponent does something. I can see that, that makes sense. But since up two is a high, I think, as far as I've heard it's a high, I never actually tested that myself. Let me know if that's wrong. Since up two is a high, maybe you then, as the opponent who has the slight frame advantage, maybe you tend to go to like a low attack as a way to take your turn back? Something that ducks under highs, whatever it is. Woo! Why would he say he's a monster? This is, so I'm always, I don't think that they deal with this part of the of the like lore very well. I think they have a lot of good lore, but this part's weird. Like outworlders know that they are outworld. Why are they outworld? Shouldn't to them, shouldn't like the earth be outworld? Right? Like shouldn't your home be like the default wherever you're from? Like the, your home is the default, and then other people are foreigners. And he's a monster. He grew up. He's a Tarkatan, and he grew up around Tarkatans, presumably. Like, why would he consider himself a monster? He should be the default in his own brain. Don't you think? I don't know. HK Riders, yeah, yeah. Um, so the flawless block catches everything, and it comes down to whether the up two will catch the hitbox. That, that's why I say, like, I wonder if you should pressure in that situation with a low attack because hopefully they're up to would whiff over it, like after they block. I guess it depends on whether like you have recovered from your, your kick and now you're like standing up or not. But if you're crouching, I don't know. I guess we'll see how it plays out, right? What are my thoughts on the Kotal reveal? I think Kotal looks so cool. Um, he looks like he has a bunch of good buttons. He's, dude, he is, he's got crazy big buttons. Like, <laughs> as many characters that the, as they've shown, and they all have like big range moves. Some of Kotal's stuff was like two thirds screen looking buttons. Like, wow, he is a huge dude. I think that looks pretty cool. I like the way totems work now. And you gotta like pick which totems you wanna use. I think that's pretty sick. Like in the, I mean, in the uh, variation select, 16-bit uh, was saying on the combat cast that there's like two loadouts for uh, totems. So I guess if you want to have all the totems together, I don't know how to punish that, or if you can't even. Um, if you want to have all the totems together, then you need to like put them all on the same variation. I think that's pretty cool. Throw a fireball. Oh, that was... Yo, kill him! Oh! Wow. What a bad idea that worked. Does he still have his weird down three, the little stanky leg? I don't know. Or do you mean down four, which actually was legit super good. James, I think, actually will play MK11. Yeah, he really seems to be interested in it more than I expected. He has played all the NRS games. Like he played MK9 for a while. He played Injustice One, MKX, Injustice Two. He played all of them for a little while, and then and then quit. And 
So maybe he'll do the same this time, but he does seem more excited for this one than he did for the previous ones. He still has Stanky Leg? Oh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> the animations in general are better in MK11 than MKX, but <laughs> some of them are little legacy ones that are terrible and are still terrible. He did play Catwoman in Injustice 2, yeah. James tries a lot of new games, you know, he's, he, uh, he plays a lot of stuff. We both do. That's why I think it's, it's funny that people talk so much about, like, scenes, players, NRS scene versus Capcom scene. In my actual life experience, I don't know that many people who are exclusively NRS players or exclusively... Capcom players. I've only met a couple people ever who call themselves a Capcom player. I've certainly met a lot of Street Fighter players, and I've met a lot of more Marvel vs. Capcom players, and I met even Vampire Savior players. Capcom players, like they'll only play a game if it's by Capcom. I've only met a couple, honestly. So I think that's like not really a phenomenon. Um, it's just like shorthand. I do know Mortal Kombat players. I know people who only play Mortal Kombat. Like, I saw Michelangelo at the MK11 reveal party, and he was there, and I haven't seen that dude in, like, two years of Injustice 2, you know? And it was the same way during Injustice 1. He had disappeared. But in MK9, he was in there for sure. In MKX, he was in there hardcore. He was telling me he's going to be playing this game super hard. He's not, like, a fighting game player or, like, an NRS player. He plays Mortal Kombat. I know a couple people like that. Yeah, like I think I think most of us are like that in the FGC. Like you have a game or two that you like really care for, and then you dabble, you dabble around with other stuff. I I certainly know some people who play only one game, but not that many, not that many. Getting adequate at a fighting game does take a while. So how does one jump around and play at a competent level? Well, that's more something that you just get used to. There's a lot of crossover in terms of strategies from fighting game to fighting game. Even in games that have their own unique ideas, like MK, as I've been saying, has its unique weirdnesses. But a lot of the same stuff applies. You figure out how to play footsies. Kind of, you know, each game has different buttons and tools to play footsies, but how do you do it? The, the sort of back and forth pacing that humans like to use, you kind of figure that stuff out in one game. And once you have, it applies in significant respect to other fighting games. It's not a one-to-one. -one. It's always a little different. But, you know, you kind of largely have figured it out. There's a lot of stuff that applies. What did I get popped up by? Wait, what? Is this... A, what is this? And then I did a jump attack? What am I seeing right now? Did I land and then jump again? I don't think it was rollback. I don't I don't think so, because there's No no for sure not. It's not rollback. Uh, yeah, I might have been I might have landed for a split frame. Maybe the trade yo, what if the trade knocked me out of my landing recovery and then I jumped? Wouldn't that be more <laughs> like, wouldn't the hit stun of down one or whatever it was be longer than landing frames? I might have, maybe I just jumped again, but that. Ah. Do I do I take any damage here? No, I don't. So yeah, I guess it was just a super low to the ground jump punch, followed by another instant jump. Very weird looking though. Yeah, there was no trade after all, it's true. I can't believe I didn't punish his throw with. Come on, man. 
Wow, point blank throw. I mean projectile. It does look that did look weird. The jump punch thing. It looked normal to you? Dude, I don't think so, man. <laughs> I thought that was definitely janky looking myself. That seems good. I like that knockdown with the flag a lot. I played Flag Day briefly, and I did like that. Ugh, that was command grab for sure. I just didn't get the input. Nah, I never played gutted. So that definitely seems important. Like, I think if you were to play Maximum Baraka, you'd probably need Gutted. I mean, if there are changes to how the character works, you know, we'll see on release, but... In terms of how this trust test played, Gutted seems pretty important. Not gonna lie. But I heard that you can't have both gutted and the command grab on the same variation. Is that true? I never looked into it myself. You cannot? Yeah. So in, the, in that case, I would prefer to have the command grab just because I like command grabs. But to play like the actual best version of Baraka, you know, maybe you need gutted. No, command grab uh, are just back forward. I don't know what I'm doing right here. <laughs> I don't know what that whipping was about. But no, his command grab is just back forward too. It's super easy. The first day I was playing this game, I assumed that it was down back forward too because I didn't even look at the at the uh, command list. I just tried out like a bunch of different button combinations to find out what the moves are. So I assumed, I knew he had a command grab. That I knew coming into it. I didn't know what the motion was, so I tried, I assumed it was down back forward too, because that's what it's been previously. In fact, in previous games it was forward down back forward too even, so that's super annoying. Uh, in this game though, it's just back forward too, and it's the same for Garrus. His is just back forward too also. So I think that's, I really appreciate that, because that was a really annoying command. Yeah man, Linka Mustard Baraka combo for sure. Is it the one where he gets three crushing blows in one combo? Because that one was awesome. Let's see what we got here. You for the host? With uh with the flag down even, of course. Yeah. Oh, into the fatal blow even. Dang, that one's wild. How much damage? This is like 75% damage? It legit took him from full life down to fatal blow territory. Wow. Okay, so it really is 70 plus damage. Percent. Amazing. Good work. Uh, I haven't fixed my wooden stick yet. I just kind of put it back together. So it's working. I can play on it. But I have my, my next stick is gonna be acrylic rather than wood and I haven't finished designing it yet. Pretty pretty soon though. Dude, the yeah, grapplers got buffed with that input change. Especially Baraka, because his is a whiff punishing command grab. Like it's so good in neutral. So you have to be able to walk around and do it. And you can, it's easy. There's no difficulty to it. Final round. Fight. Oh, here's Fire FN1. Here to talk crap on my Bardock, huh? Huh? <laughs> Yo, 
Yo, did you see that beam right there? That came all the way through. No, the new command grab motion is just back forward. It's really easy. Woo, boy. I'm trying to dance around his fatal blow right now. Okay. Nobody's been playing Baraka for years. Did you ever meet an MK9 Baraka player? I never met one. Never. <laughs> Bardock. <laughs> Uh, if you weren't here, yesterday I was watching footage of myself playing versus players who were very talkative on their mics as we were playing. And there was one dude who was so upset at how good my Bardock was. <laughs> he was playing Scorpio, according to him, and he was playing against my Bardock, and he kept talking about how good my beams were, and it was really funny. Yeah, Bar I mean, Baraka sucked in MK9. That's why I never saw one. Not, But not just did he suck. Like, who cares about the character? But this is the first time he's ever been interesting. As a character. Not just as, as gameplay. Wow, what a tech. Ooh, what a terrible jump kick, man. Come on, dude. Terrible time. Wow, wow, what mix-ups. He was your favorite in Mortal Kombat 2? I feel like this is like, you know how when Mika reappeared in Street Fighter V after like two decades almost of just being hidden in alphas? And then all of a sudden a lot of people were like, oh Mika, I can't wait to play her, she's my favorite. Get out of here. Like, I met in my whole life before Street Fighter V, I met maybe five people who cared about her at all. Like, not even were just like, she's my favorite character, but like, cared about her at all. And I knew maybe two people who thought that she was one of their favorite characters. And I've known, I know a lot of fighting game players, and I didn't know too many people who cared about Mika. I feel like that's Baraka now, where people are coming out of the woodwork like, oh yeah, I always played Baraka, oh yeah. I don't know. Oh wow, Blade Charge could be safe in MK9? I don't remember now. It's too long ago for me. Can you hit confirm jump ins? Or is it like Injustice that you have to commit? It's still like Injustice where you have to commit. That's just something that NRS games do. Jump in punches are the beginning of a string. So you have to think of them. And like a grounded string, you have to commit to at least the, the first couple hits in order to hit confirm. So jump and punches are the same. So you basically do jump and punch into the first hit of whatever your string is you want to follow up with. And at that point you're confirming, right? After two hits you can you can confirm. Or like a hit and a half, kind of. Same way on the ground. Like it's not that big of a deal. I understand that that's awkward. That feels awkward if you're not accustomed to it. But once you're accustomed to it, it's, you know, whatever. Just a part of the game. God, I'm moving. Not not good movement by me. Why would I do stand one after that? Obviously, it's he's gonna duck. Round two, fight. I haven't known that many Voldo mains either. I, I've known a couple. But I don't know that many Soul Calibur players either, and so for there to be like two Voldos among the Soul Calibur players I know, I feel like it means there might be more fans than of Baraka and Mika. Dang, that flag has huge range, jeez. I don't think I knew that. Wow, you can that's super good then. That's tough. That's a tough one. Baraka. 
Wow, you've been mating Devil Jin since Tekken 5. So you, you've, you've somehow managed to play one of the most popular characters in two versions, three versions of the game. Wow. So you're going out on a limb, man. I'm gonna be zoning. That's me, man. I look. Here's here are the two things I like to do in fighting games. I like to zone people and I like to throw people. Those are the two. And all the other things that I do are basically to set up one or the other. <laughs> That's like my gameplay philosophy. How does this set up a command grab or how does this set up zoning? That's what I want. Ah, cool. Why am I not ducking that? Yeah, okay. I probably thought th to myself at the time, why didn't I just neutral duck that? Oh, got him. Yo, you didn't spend meter on that? Okay. Jump kicks in this game let you recover faster so it's easier to combo after them? Is that a change? I mean, have they actually changed that? Because in MKX, you could definitely do that too. MK9 even. I don't know that it's different, but like, it, maybe it is. Let me know. I agree that Conra was the most me character. Unfortunately, that game was in beta until season three, so you only had access to it on an invite-only basis. You know, a very exclusive club, and I, I wasn't among that club. But I really like Ki. Oh, yeah, Tekken Five is actually old. I played that game in college, so it is old. Dang, that was a good whiff punish, alright. Oh, dude, motherly turtle, turtle, I like chip damage kills. I think it's cool. I also, I guess I like not chip damage kills. I'm fine, I suppose the reality is. Either way. Either way is cool with me. I don't really care that much. But I do think it's cool to have chip damage kills. I'm totally fine with it. And in the context of NRS games, even though like everything does chip, normals do chip, everything does chip. Um, even still, I feel like there's more comebacks in more interesting ways in this series than in most others. Like just something about the game, like it's just the way that they have designed their games just comes up with that and it's not even like there's like an obvious comeback mechanic you don't get x factor or anything but i still feel like there's a lot of good comebacks Round two, i like i think chip feels fine i don't have like a very strong position either way i just i think it's fine I've seen back two anti-air, but not right there, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was looking for better juggles out of that. I never found one mid-screen with the spines. Only corner. Who's that? Dang, it still didn't kill? What was Wake Up Back for? What was that about? It was weird. <laughs> so, the buff dashes, I'm looking forward to. I'm happy that they're not super fast still. They're not like objectively super fast compared to other games, but I like them because I think that dashing, especially back dashing, is really, really important in footsies. And having that extra button, that extra option, to make sure that you're outside of somebody's range is really cool. Like, you have such big normals in this game, and without good mobility, I feel like there's just a lot of kind of back and forth. You press your button, I did mine. We've already seen a lot of that. Obviously, I'm no top player, but like, I just do back two sometimes, and it works, and it's hard to out for the opponent to outrange it. Back four is the same, forward four is the same, like they're just really good. But if there's a good back dash, then the opponent can like all of a sudden be out of a range that looks like they're in, whereas walking can't get them out of it. So I like having a backdash for that, for that reason. 
So I think it, I think it really helps footsies personally. And having the threat of a forward dash, I think makes footsies more interesting. It makes it that it's less about buttons. Yeah, I keep looking for what to do. Um, like it keeps it keeps the buttons important to have a when you're the, when there's a good forward dash, but it also means that you have to look for character movement, and that's part of footsies too. So I like it a lot. I'm totally down with it. So as far as dash cancels go, oh no, it's dying. It's not like MKX. Oh, bummer. It's not like MKX where um, uh, you had like real dash cancel pressure. I think Jade has that, but it, maybe it's not as good as in MKX. It's like a special thing for her though. I'm glad that there's not that's not all over the place in the same way it was in MKX. I thought that was annoying. Like, I don't know, maybe not annoying, but like, I didn't care for it, and I don't care about the execution side of it to make that happen either on the player side. And like some of it was super obnoxious too, like to do Kano horizontal ball cancel continue pressure, like it just it was weird. Back forward, then down down, then it just weird cancel timings. Um, so I'm happy to not have that stuff as much. I think that's I'm fine with that. But you do get to cancel regular dashes, yes, like an MK9. So you can cancel a dash into a block or a button or whatever. That's cool, I'm happy about that. It's just that the dashes aren't like an MK9 where they were really far and fast. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed MK9 footsies in part because of that. You could be so precise without where you wanted to go in terms of uh, movement. This game I think is not quite as much as that because the dashes aren't quite as far, but the, the footsies other than that I think are much stronger than MK9, so it's cool. Yeah, Kano could cancel EX ball. It it wasn't it wasn't the same kind of continued pressure that other characters would get. It wasn't like Devora dash cancel, right? Like it's not that kind of thing. I'm just saying like when there was the characters that had cancels, they were all like tied to a special move that you then you had to run, that you had to dash out of and then press guard so that you could cancel the dash into a run. It was just like a lot of stuff executionally and I didn't care about it. Anyway, that's it for this, and that's it for the vids that I'm going to show right now. i got to go do some real-life work. But uh, i still got uh, a couple more things to show. I have what I describe as, in my little notes, first good set. That's cool. Take a look at that later on. That'll probably be tomorrow. So tune in, stick around. Man, we're going to be doing so much Mortal Kombat stuff on Ultra Chen, so give a little follow here if you care about that on twitch.tv slash Ultra Chen TV. And then also look at YouTube, we're going to upload everything, and including lots of other tech. Whenever there's a new NRS game out, uh, I really like looking into the tech side of things. I feel like I'm less interested in that in other games now, to be honest, but uh, in NRS games, I'm still super interested in that. So, I'm, especially with Garrus, I'm really excited to try stuff out. So look for some tech videos and some character explanations and stuff like that. So give us a follow on, uh, or subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash ultra10tv as well. Alrighty, thanks for hanging. Have a good rest of your day, y'all.